Hey, remember Nintendo Directs? <laughs> Nintendo Directs used to be Nintendo's way of announcing new games that they were going to release sometime eventually. I've reviewed two of them. The March 2018 one, back on my old channel, and the E3 2019 one on this channel. However, there hasn't been a new one for over a year. There were the mini Nintendo Directs, which were perfectly serviceable, although they were definitely really short, and there were the series-specific Nintendo Directs. I even made a review of the Mario 35th Nintendo Direct, but a fully-fledged 45- to 50-minute Nintendo Direct hadn't been done since 2019. Until now. February 17th was a big day for me, not only because... Uh, the Nintendo Direct was coming out, but also, I got this. This is your final warning. If you don't have one of these, or Mario 3D All-Stars, or Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon, get them now, before it's too late. But anyway, back, back to Ken. Ken. I mean, the Nintendo Direct. So the Direct opens up with what looks like a Xenoblade game. I've never played Xenoblade, so it doesn't really interest me that much, although I do put on- Oh wait, it's a Smash character. Kyra, from Xenoblade Chronicles 2. That's not a choice. I understand that Rex is a Mii Fighter costume, but if you can't have the main character in there, why even bother? Now, what's notable about Pyra is that she's actually two characters in one, like with Zelda and Sheik, or is it Samus and Zero Suit Samus in the older Smash games. Which brings up a good question. If Pyra can do it, and the Pokemon trainer can do it, why can't we bring back the Melee and Brawl versions of S S Zelda and Samus? After that, we move on to the Direct's Ringmaster. Not Yoshi this time, but rather Shinya Takahashi. He says that, it's been a while, here's Fall Guys. Evidently, Nintendo doesn't understand, Fall Guys is dead. Up next is a port of Outer Wilds. I've never played it, it seems fun, moving on. After that is a localization of some old visual novel for the NES, showing that Nintendo will go to great lengths to localize any old game that they have, except for what we actually want. Next up is Samurai Warriors 5, and as someone who can't get into the Warrior series but wants to, I'm sold. Next up is Legend of Mana Remastered. This was the biggest announcement to me. I have the collection of Mana, and I love, well, the first and third game in the collection. Not, not that big of a fan of Secret of Mana. The thing about Legend of Mana is that it's the most expensive Mana game, and I really want to play it, so having the remaster would be incredible. But the fact that this is my favorite announcement of the whole thing should tell you something about the rest of the Direct. Next up is more info on Monster Hunter Rise, moving on. After that, Takahashi comes back to announce Mario Golf Super Rush. I don't really care about golf games, so count me out. Up next is Tales from the Borderlands, and this Direct reminded me I need to start playing Borderlands. Next up is more info on Capcom Arcade, moving on. Stuff of the Zombies is a game that people only care about because of that one Game Jam video. I never played it, it looks fun, moving on. Then we get more info on No More Heroes 3. I was already sold on the game, I'm even more sold now, I still need to play the first two games. Let's go! I made sure to tell myself that Neon White is not just some post-game content in SMT5. This was actually probably the second best announcement in the, in the Direct. I don't know whether it's a rail shooter, or a first-person shooter, or a combination of both. It has this neat little garden mechanic that l looks like the, it makes the game a whole lot more fun. Alright, so that's two great announcements in a row, let's see what's next. AKA Batgirl, I'm always in- I didn't really pay attention to this one, I just played on the game and watched it the entire time. But at least it gets followed up by a Plants vs. Zombies game. I love the originals, but I've heard that the uh, first-person shooters by EA aren't good. Next up, they announced Miitopia, a cute little RPG where you create your own heroes and villains by using Miis. They touted a whole bunch of neat features that would have been awesome if they weren't already in the 3DS original. And then we get some Animal Crossing stuff. I don't play Animal Crossing. And then Shinya Takahashi comes back and says, please take a look at this. And when the trailer started, I thought that Breath of the Wild 2 was going to have a morality system. No. Now there's a new Star Wars game. I don't know how it plays, but it looks cool because it's Star Wars. This is a game called Knockout City. I have no idea what I'm looking at, but the trailer is incredible. World's End Club is a game created by the developers of Zero Escape. It's a 2D platformer. Zero Escape is a visual novel. I have no idea how this is going to turn out. They announced the physical release of an indie game that's already out. For one thing, how is this direct worthy? And for another thing, why isn't this required for every game on the Switch in general? The Ninja Gaiden Master Collection. Alright, so there's a couple of things about this. Now, for this collection, they don't use the original Hack and Slash games. They use the upgraded Sigma edition. And while I haven't played these games in any way, shape, or form, the uh, Sigma editions seem to be a bit worse than the originals. In the case of Ninja Gaiden Sigma 1, I've heard that a lot of people don't like the stuff that it added and also miss the stuff that it removed. 
so there's that. I mean, even the creator of the, the even the creator of the reboot series didn't really like Sigma at all. That's no good. In the case of Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2, there were fewer changes, but allegedly they make the game annoying rather than simply difficult. The uh, enemy count is drastically lowered, but to compensate, the firepower of the enemies is blown out the wazoo, and the game just isn't as fun. The Ninja Gaiden 3 is just a me thing. The original PS3 version has motion control support, and I'll take any chance to look ridiculous while playing a video game. After that, they announced DLC for Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. Nobody cares. Bravely Default 2. This still confuses me. Ghost and Goblins Resurrection. You don't need to tell me anymore, I'm already interested. Saga from Deteriorate Remastered. Cool. Apex Legends. Nobody cares about Battle Royale games anymore. And then Takahashi comes back, brings it over to A.G. Onuma. Oh my goodness, we're gonna get more information on Breath of the Wild 2! Unfortunately, we don't have anything to share right now. Well, that's disappointing. Instead, they announced a remaster of Skyward Sword. You know, that one. The one that uses the ridiculously finicky Wii Motion Plus. If you're using the Switch Lite, you can use the right stick to move the sword. This is Zelda, not Robotron 2084. What are they even thinking? Attention, you know, Takahashi comes back and announces that there's one more thing, and it's always a great thing, and I wonder what it's gonna be. What's the point of this? Splatoon 3, it's Splatoon again, but with pets. And that's about it. This could have just been an update for Splatoon 2, but no, it's a completely new game. Why? So that's the Direct. It was a Nintendo Direct. There were a couple of great announcements, a bunch of forgettable ones, and one monstrosity. Overall, it's a Direct, but with this having come out over a year after the last one, I was expecting a bit more than just another Direct, so overall this was a bit disappointing.